Uh, for those of you who don't know, Tim Spires is the Wolves correspondent uh, for The Athletic. And apparently uh, some Wolves fans were telling me he's the most reliable journalist when it comes to Wolves. And he's saying Tottenham target Adama Traore has resumed talks with Wolves for a new contract and all parties are optimistic of a successful resolution. Do you feel like uh, the boat, the Adama boat um, has come and sailed? Past? Not yet. I don't think it's sailed yet because um, I don't. I guess he, until he signs that contract, it definitely hasn't sailed. Because if he's still, if he's got two years left, come January, they could definitely. I reckon, and he hasn't signed, and they can definitely be persuaded with a good offer. I reckon in January, and also with the longer, as much as Wolves are playing well um, at the moment, despite uh, playing well in defeat, unfortunately for them, as much as long as their run continues, and say they come January in their you know lower mid table. Sorry, low, lower mid table or um, bottom half of the table, whatever. I'm sure Adama wants something more and um, um, to be in a more ambitious uh, race in terms of the league table. And he and we all know he wants to come. To, he wanted to come to Spurs in the summer. So as long as he doesn't sign that contract, he hasn't held. I, and I think there's a good chance he won't sign it as long as Wolves are not doing that great, in my opinion. Mm. So I know he he knows there are clubs who are prepared to pay him a higher wage and are prepared to take him on like Spurs. So um, I think it's probably within his interest not to sign the contract just mm. yet. Probably. Um, unless uh, he kind of negotiates some sort of release clause that Spurs are willing to pay in it or something like that. Yeah, maybe. That, that's possible. But um, I think the release clause Wolves will probably want to put in is something like 50 million. And at the moment, we're not prepared to pay that. So, it's, you know, maybe they're, if he doesn't negotiate that, they would take a lower offer in January. That's probably a more likely solution. So, um, I don't know. I feel, I, yeah, I feel like this boat has not sell just yet I think mm. there's still hope for it as long as he doesn't sign the contract and he started the season really well it's really, he started the season pretty much as how Adama has always been isn't he creating havoc but no real damage yeah. basically I mean the only time he's done proper proper damage is that one season under Nuno where he got like 9 Premier League goals and like 14 assists or whatever it yeah was. but he's, show, he's, he's pretty much shown the best and the worst of Adama hasn't he um, during this season but he's just so he caused so much um, havoc in defences and so much chaos that maybe he's just like, for example, not like look, look. Yes, Adama had chances, but look at the chances he created for his other teammates um, against United, against Spurs. Mm -hmm. um, he missed chances himself, yes, but you know the chances his teammates missed. Son and Kane are not missing those chances, and that's a lot of it was caught, made because of the havoc he caused. Mm -hmm. And if he could do that for Tottenham, he could be very, very valuable. So yeah. he would definitely be. I think he would be worth having um, in the squad. So. Um, I, I think as much as he's shown the worst of himself, he's also showed how valuable he could be. I think with Adama, people are completely blinded by the fact that he's not a good finisher of the ball. Yeah, I think people are completely blinded by that. And yes, um, his his kind of finishing and scoring needs to be, needs to improve and can improve, but. His delivery into the box and his like kind of way how he can muscle past defenders and you know even pass the ball into box cross the ball into the box is so underrated in my opinion. I think like he's definitely one of the best in the Premier League in that, and I think that it's just like people just whenever they see Adama they think about his one on ones that he misses and the chances that he misses, but the amount of chances he creates a game is absolutely unreal. Yeah, they they kind of basically always think about what he can't do as opposed to what he can do. Yeah, exactly. And that's what you got to focus on. I guess maybe we're also guilty with that with Lucas as well sometimes focusing on what he can't do as opposed to what he can do. But I don't. I feel like Lucas doesn't open up the game as much as Adama does. Adama like uh, Lucas is great at uh, dribbling all that kind of stuff. But I feel I don't know. Be I feel like what you say here, or John will be after you. I know. I just feel like Lucas doesn't open up as much uh, the, 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 as, um, as much space on a on a on a um, frequency basis as much as Adama does. Mm. I think he does it like like Lucas will do four or five dribbles a game, which is great and really high compared to other dribblers. But Adama will do like nine or ten, and that's like a ridiculous level, like different level. I believe all round gameplay. I think Lucas might be a better player than but than. Um than Adama yeah but I think that on a consistent basis throughout the whole season I think Adama might actually uh, be worth having in our team and maybe not what he shows for Wolves and what Lucas shows for us but I think that in our team I think Adama might actually be better to have than Lucas because he can 
kind of split that defence pretty much every game. Yeah. And, and it's just about who finishes around him. Uh, Lucas Moura can go missing in games. That's the thing. Adama also does seem to be a bit more of a consistent performer. I Maybe Wolves can tell me, fan, Wolves fans can tell me different, but he does seem to be a bit more of a consi- consistent performer than Lucas, mm. who, as you say, go, can sometimes just completely go missing in games. Whereas Adama, even when he's not having a great game, he's had that, cause he had that physicality he has. You can still get the ball to him and he can hold it up and he can be involved in the game. Whereas Lucas, like against that Wolves game, like he can just go hiding sometimes. And we don't even need to compare the two because I think the squad can can do with both of them. You just know what imagine I mean? Lucas running options, at someone yeah. and then Adama coming all vice versa. Or even like Lucas in a number 10, Adama on the right and uh, Sonny on the left. Yeah, Kane be, up top. It would just be, uh, it'll Havoc. be frightening. Havoc. Be frightening. Imagine that on the counter-attack. Yeah. <laughs>